Hello, what's up, what's new? Welcome, welcome. So in this video I have some interesting uh, findings to share with you concerning a Robert Adams, John Bedini type pulse motor and how the drive coil also functions as a generator or pickup coil while it's functioning as a drive coil. So rather than me try to explain it and just keep yammering at you, you probably won't see it. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are at the table and we've got our simple little pulse motor spinning. And there's the Hall effect and here's our coil that's driving this. We're running, we're running just at 4 volts. So there's no need for, you know, we don't need to put extreme power in or anything. And I also put in an um, analog um, amp meter and let's say in maybe 12 milliamps instead of 10. So here's the first mystery. And hopefully I can show this without having to put an RPM meter on there because it's kind of um, difficult to have everything at the same time. There's your air gap. Now I'm going to bring this in and what I want you to pay attention to is the speed of the rotor. You can hear it slow down and you can kind of see it too, can't you? Oh, it's as close as I can bring it. And it's still slowing down. So we're just going to give it a minute to stabilize. So that's our new speed with it in there. And the amp draw has gone down. So that's sort of the first mystery. And I've known about this for a long time. And what I said to myself was, well, that's, that's lens effect in action. But if you think about it, and I always knew in the back of my mind, that explanation doesn't make any sense. And I'll show you why. Here's a much bigger coil. A lot more wind, same gauge of wire, so a lot more inductance. And there. Okay, we've, you know, we've got it spinning up fast now. So this has got a lot more inductance. And of course there's no change. And that's because you only get lens effect if your coil is loaded. So in other words, if I put in a bridge rectifier, if I put in a diode, and shunted those spinning magnets, that magnetic flux, off to a battery or a resistor or charging a cap, you would see the same thing. There would be drag on the rotor. So, you know, it's not just that you have wires sitting around. Whoops. But this thing does slow the rotor down. And that means that this is loaded. But there's nothing coming off the bridge rectifier. So how is this loaded? And that's where things get interesting. But before we go there, let's go back to that part that I left off, uh, that I just mentioned briefly in the last Spinning Things video. Okay, so now I've actually turned it down to 3 volts. And I put the LED in across the bridge rectifier. So now this, this actually, there is a load, both with the magnet spinning past and also that you're, you're putting power and pulses into the coil and so that's a changing magnetic field as well and we see that there and the thing that I pointed out because for for a while I thought that everything that was going on was just you doing the pulses of power from the power supply into here and that this was a minor effect but this is what I showed the last video I'm gonna turn the power off now powers off and we still got some light coming out there, don't we? So let's look at that a little bit more. Because one thought you might have is, well, maybe that only happens when the power shut off. And that when the power's on, you know, for some reason that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is the exact same thing as before. Is I'm going to shove this in, and the thing to do is to observe the, the LED. And I hope I don't actually even just fry the LED or something like that. So I'm bringing in... I might want to turn it down to like 2 volts, but I'm bringing it in now. Okay. 
You see what happened? Did, did that show up on the camera? Because the LED got a lot brighter. Now I'll show you something else, just that there's an interplay going on. I'm bringing it out, it got dimmer, but then it'll start to get brighter again as the magnets speed up, because the magnets are doing a lot of the magnetic flux. So we can see that the spinning magnets are a big part of what's coming off the bridge rectifier. The generator coil function of your drive coil is a big part of what's coming off the bridge rectifier. And it's not just the short pulses of electricity. They do their thing too. Now you remember I said at the start of the video, I'm not even sure if the primary reason you have that going on is the spinning magnets and this acting as a generator coil and not the pulsed electricity. Now I have to be very careful with this, what I'm showing with this next part, because at three volts, there's a, you know, like a 0.7 volt drop across the diodes. So in other words, it's not until you get up to like 10 volts that the, the bridge rectifier will be doing well with this. But let me just, if I pull this out, as long as these magnets are still spinning past, there's still going to be pulses, the same pulses of electricity going into here. And I pull it out, and look at how dim it gets. So that's telling me that it's not the, the pulses going into here. That hasn't changed because this hasn't had time to slow down, but it's so much dimmer. But again, at 3 volts, you want to be careful reading into that too much. I know that there is power coming off from the collapse of the magnetic field each time you pulse it, but when you have these neodymiums roaring past, a lot of it's from there. And the last thing I would say on that part is that when you go to higher voltages, this will spin faster. These pulses then will be shorter and shorter, and that makes the buck boost conver converter part of this more efficient. So this pulsing from there would become more significant at higher voltages and higher RPMs. But at this low voltage, most of what you're getting is from the spinning magnets. So that's also why I said, you know, geez, I've been going about this all the wrong way. I mean, what you kind of want to do, I mean, you would, like one way would be how bright, I mean, you want to you want to think about how bright can you make that light for a given input power. And you could, you know, I mean, you could put like a light meter. You don't need to do that. I mean, just get rid of the light put a resistor and an amp meter across there and then you can compare your milliamps here and your milliamps coming out of there. So one thing that's interesting is, let me get rid of this, it's starting to annoy me. Okay, we can see that this pickup coil also functions as a generator coil and we demonstrated that with the LED. But even when the bridge rectifier isn't going to any load, we see this slowing down when I brought this in close, which would indicate a lens resistance. But it's like, why, why is that there? So now I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. Let's make it a little more dramatic. So I've turned it up to a whole 5 volts, and we're spinning pretty nice now. So here's the amp draw on our analog meter. And here's here's the coil. So I'm going to shove the coil close and I want you to observe the milliamp draw. Okay, bringing it out. And this is on the analog meter. Shoving it in. <laughs> bringing it out. Now, while that is extremely interesting, if I leave it in, we have the same thing where it slows down slows down, slows down. We'll give it a minute. So I think the rotor is slowed down to its stable speed here, and that's now the amp draw. But recall when we were further out, it was up around um, 20 milliamps, and now it's down there, but we're going a lot slower. Um, so 
Now we're going to let this pick up a head of steam again. And then this time when I shove it close, I want you to observe what um, happens with the power supply. Okay, I think it's spun up. Let me go over here and I'm going to shove this in right now. That's what happens to the voltage on the power supply. We already saw the amp draw go negative, well, you know, until it slows down. But there's one other thing with the voltage that um, I'll show you that's interesting as we let this slow down. I, I think it's slowed down as much as it's going to. And remember the, the input voltage was 5, but it's, it's just staying there at 5.3. So there's actually a higher input voltage now. The thing's spinning much slower, but our amp draw is less than a quarter of focus, less than a quarter of what it was before. Okay, so one mystery solved and another one appears. And the second one is why I never really accepted this in the first place, but it's, it's just too obvious now. The reason that there's Lenz Law is because this voltage is getting fed back to source. That's why the milliamp draw dropped. That's why the voltage went up. It's getting fed back to source. So, you know, riddle me this, Joker. How the heck does it get rectified? You know, I went through all that effort for four, four diodes in a bridge diode, you know, format. This thing with no diodes is ending up putting a positive voltage in. And I'll show you one more thing because, you know, I mean, this is something I thought, like maybe there's something, you know, hinky with the power supply or something like that. Let me show you one more demonstration of this. Okay, so now I've, I've taken a one millifarad cap and, and it's empty. I put the voltmeter across it and I've hooked it up pretending that it's the power supply and I've shut the power supply off, disconnected the power supply and now I'm going to give the um, rotor a spin oh, come on, don't do that and that's one volt now if I spin it the other way that's negative one volt Spin it that way. This is really curious. And one last thing I'll do for you here. I'll just remove one of the lines to the bridge rectifier just to show that it has nothing to do with this. So there it is again. There it is again. This is this is something I don't understand. I mean, somebody explain it to me. I, I got no idea. Um, these magnets are going north, south, north, south. So therefore, if I'm spinning it like this, this has to be an AC, yet somehow it's getting rectified to one time put out a positive voltage and then spun the other way put out a negative voltage. Isn't that fascinating? I need to think about that more. Okay, so now I, I threw in this coil, which it has a heck of a lot of inductance. I don't, I don't think this is really the, the right coil shape for this. I mean... It's way too high, it's too wide also. But the inductance makes up for a lot of sins. Love makes up for a lot of sins. So this is um, not ideal, but um, we're starting to learn how to engineer for this. And just the fact that you have all this inductance means things get interesting. So with this wide air gap, we're at five volts that's zero we're drawing i would say two milliamps but let's bring this in now of course we get that going on so we're just going to let it settle down because if you recall with the smaller coil when it settled down it still didn't go back to the original amp draw you just spun slower with less amp draw so this thing is settled down now. We're at 5 volts. And 
that's our amp drop. So what is it? Is it one? Is it zero? Is it negative one? Probably not negative one, but nothing's off the table at this point, huh? So the issue you kind of have is, let's say it's one milliamp. Now, if you have a, a double A or a triple A battery even, it's going to be a thousand milliamp hours. So one milliamp, a thousand milliamp hours, a thousand hours. So 24 hours in a day, 240 in 10 days, 2,400 in 100 days. So if you ran it off a couple uh, triple A's and in a month and a half, you'd have your answer. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's drawing one milliamp. Even if you took these things, which, you know, I, I put on the, the Arduino um, battery capacity test. Great video. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and these things are just ruined. They're, they're 100 milliamp hours. Uh, so like in over four days, you would know. So it's like, all right, you're not going to get your answer that way. So what do you do? So this is a 5.5 volt. No, no. Yeah, 5.5 volt, 2.2 farad supercapacitor. So if you charge this to 5 volts, 5 volts times 2.2 .2 farads, so 5 times 2.2 .2 would be 11 coulombs of charge would be in here. And 1 amp is equal to 1 coulomb per second. And so I can't remember what I just said. 5 times 2.2, .2, there's 11 coulombs. So 11,000 millicoulombs. 3,000 seconds, 3,600 seconds an hour. Um, I divided it all. I was like 2.3, and then you got to remember that the voltage is going to go down linearly. It, it works out to right around 1.5 milliamp hours is what's in this. 1.5 milliamp hours. You could you could do it yourself just put it in a spreadsheet. Okay, so now I've charged this up to well let's charge it up to five. I've charged it up to five. That's still charging a little bit. We'll just charge up. Charge it up to five volts. I mean that 0 0.1 is still going into the cap. But you'll get the idea. I've already done this before. So when I disconnect this line, this is to the power supply, it'll be running off of the cap, the supercapacitor, with approximately, what did I say, 1.5 milliamp hours. So now it's just running off of there. So now we have something that should go down in a reasonable amount of time. So I've already done this, and I won't go through all the math or repeat it again. But what I'll say is that I did this. I read it initially. It was spinning at 140 RPMs. Two, something like two hours later, I think it was at 70 RPMs. And, you know, when I did the math, it turns out that you're drawing 500 microamps right now to get this thing spinning. So... Just a couple last points and then we wrap this up. I mean, one, I guess this doesn't show up that much in conventional motors because the the duty cycle is so long and the, the coils are on for so long that it's when you have a pulse motor that you get this, this generator function going as well. So that's one thing. And um, and then there's there's sort of two branches going forward. And you know, um, we know how to engineer for this now, don't we? I mean, we want to increase the mechanical efficiency and improve what you're getting out with this as a generator coil. So that has to do with pulse width modulation. But the obvious one going forward is that we're using this half of the coil. This half of the coil is pulsing out the same, sorry, the same force as before, but it's not doing anything. Now, it's opposite polarity, of course, but it's not doing anything. 
And there's a couple ways to solve that. One um, is one that Robert Smith mentioned in his write-up on his pulse motor. I, I call this his pulse motor. Um, and that's, you know, put a pickup coil here and split it in half, bring it around, put it, put it there. There's another way to do it, too. I won't give that away yet. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll see that when, uh, when we do it. There's another, and I think a better way to do it. So that's one thing, is you bring that to bear, and I'll, I'll have to get the nozzle cleaned on the 3D printer to do that. Um, but you can also, I mean, you can just think about if you have two coils in series, and again, coil shape, this is not, not an ideal coil shape. If you take one coil and then put a second coil in series, what happens to the inductance? It doubles. What happens to the resistance? It doubles. What happens to the mechanical electromotive force it's the same so the resistance is doubled so your amp draw has gone to half but your motive force is the same now it doesn't from what i've seen it doesn't turn out to be exactly you know twofold but it it improves a great deal so one thing is just getting more wire around more of this rotor but the last thing is, you know, we got to kind of keep things fun and light and lively um, for, you know, for myself and everyone else. We're, we're doing this with 500 microamps and not a lot of capacitance. I mentioned jokingly, you know, I built this battery capacitor, battery capacity tester on the Arduino. What's the, what's the capacity of a lemon battery? <laughs> You know, uh, is it 100 milliamp hours? Because, you know, the thing they say, oh, you can only get like one, millo, uh, one milliamp out of there. Well, that's twice as much as you need. So one of the things you could do with this, just even exactly with this setup, is have a couple lemons, put this on there, and they would probably spin the thing for a week. <laughs> just as a conversation piece. Just have a couple lemons and, uh, you know, this thing would spin for, for maybe like two weeks or something like that. So that's where we're going to be going uh, going forward through the rest of the summer. And, right? Is it fall already? Uh, going into fall. But yeah, this thing will spin for hours off of a, off of a supercapacitor. So we'll wrap this up here and um, thank you kindly for your attention and take care everyone.